Josie Althor was once a young, promising talent in the USMNT pool, but unfortunately for him especially, that career did not turn out the way we all anticipated it to be. So in this video, we're going to cover the unfortunate career of Josie Althor. Before we get started, of course, if you guys like what you're hearing or watching while you're driving or working or you know sitting on your couch having a nice uh, you know drink, then subscribe down below and definitely hit the like button if you don't want to subscribe. At least hit the like button. It really helps the video out, helps me out, and I'll help you guys out to just you know pay it forward. So without further ado, let's get to it. Josie Altador was born in Livingston, New Jersey, and raised in Boca Raton, Florida. It was in South Florida where Josie became invested in soccer, playing for multiple local teams. He was also training with the U-17 national team at that time with the IMG Academy or Image Academy, whatever you want to say. Your boy says IMG. And Josie, if you're watching, man, uh, come on the channel. I would love to hear your thoughts on your career and just have you talk to the fans here. It, it was, it's awesome. It would be great. Altador was the 17th overall pick in the 2006 MLS Super Draft. He made his pro debut on August 23, 2006, when he came on as a sub in the New York Red Bulls' 3-1 loss to DC United. A couple weeks later, on September 16, 2006, Josie would score his first goal for New York Red Bulls and his first ever pro goal in general against the Columbus Crew. The New York Red Bulls went on to win that game against Columbus Crew, with Altidore's goal being the only goal that sealed the deal in a 1-0 victory. From then on, Altador would go on to score 15 goals in 37 appearances with the New York Red Bulls and was quickly becoming a fan favorite and monitored by teams abroad. Only two years into his professional career and just at 19 years old, Josie was on his way to one of the biggest clubs in Spain, Villarreal. He became the largest transfer fee ever paid for an MLS player at that time, beating Clint Dempsey's with his payout being $10 million paid to New York Red Bulls. He made a couple appearances for Villarreal and actually became the first ever American to score in La Liga, which is actually a stat that I never knew um, Alador had. I just thought there was other players from America to play La Liga, but I guess not. Either way, Alador is the first ever American to score in La Liga. So after a couple games with the Yellow Submarines, Josie was then to be loaned out to second division leaders at that time, Exodus. Altidore was uneasy about this as he preferred to stay with his parent club to try and prove his worth, his hype, and of course, his investment with that team, but he eventually was loaned down anyway. Villarreal wanted Josie to get more consistent playing time and associate himself more with the Spanish culture, but unfortunately, this is where the first sign of injuries came to Josie Altidore's playing career. Altidore never made a single appearance for Exodus because of a toenail injury that needed surgery and I kept him out for more than a month, so that's that was wild. And then at the start of the 2009-2010 season, Altidore was to be loaned out to English side Hull City, who at that time were playing in the Premier League. Uh, he went on to appear in 31 games, providing 7 assists and scoring 2 goals. One of those goals being against Man City, where Hull won that game 2-1. And it's not the same Man City that we're all used to seeing nowadays, that are just dominating the whole freaking league and smaller teams like Hull City. But they were on the rise in the beginning of the early stages of that big money buyout, buying big players. But still, nice to have that on your portfolio. In a must-win game to help Hull City survive relegation, Altidore went on and got a red card for getting into heated argument with a Sunderland player and eventually headbutting him, Zinedine Zidane style, uh, got sent off, and then eventually Hull City did in fact get relegated that season. At the start of the 2010-2011 season, Josie Altidore was back playing with Villarreal, making 14 appearances, some of which were in the Europa League, though he could only score two goals in these 14 games, and was eventually loaned out again in the January transfer window to Turkish side Bursaspor. If I said that wrong, I apologize. He was with his team until the end of the season. He made 12 appearances, scoring just one lonely goal. That summer, though, Aldor had a lot going on in his pro career at that time. He was playing with the USMNT at the 2011 Gold Cup that summer, and was looking to join a new club trying to leave Villarreal. Let's start off with his 2011 Gold Cup run. He played four games, scoring two goals and providing one assist until some injury scares appeared once again. This time, it was more serious than the toenail. It was reported that Josie Altidore had some knee problems that kept him out of the rest of the tournament where he missed the USMNT semifinal against Panama 
and ultimately the final against eventual champions Mexico. A month later and seemingly all recovered, Josie officially signed for Dutch league side Alzi Akmar. If I said that wrong, I apologize, but this is the club where I believe Josie flourished the most and definitely made a name for himself. He spent two seasons at this club and he was definitely not having enough problem finding the back of the net. In his first season with Azzy Akmar, Josie racked up 20 goals in 52 appearances. He also led his team in goals with 20 goals across all competitions. He finished tied at 7th place in the league's top goal scorers table. Josie helped his team finish 4th place that year and helped them reach the quarterfinals of the Europa League, being eliminated only by a very strong Valencia side at that time. The following season was individually a good campaign for Josie out the door, but a mediocre one for his team overall as they finished 10th place and got knocked out of the Europa League in the qualifying rounds. Altidore finished his season scoring 31 goals and having three hat-tricks to his name. He became the first ever American to be named in D-Telegraph's team of the season after hat finishing with 23 goals in the Dutch League and 8 goals in the Dutch Cup. He was quickly gaining attention worldwide from many other clubs looking to sign the American goal machine. And then in the summer of 2013, Josie infamously joined Premier League side Sunderland. Now I'm a fan of Josie Altidore and always wanted our USA players to succeed abroad and at that time where we didn't really have that many big players playing in really big leagues or teams I was excited to see someone who was scoring really regularly for his team in a smaller league come to the big leagues of the Premier League and see if he could do the same thing there so I was really rooting for Josie at, uh, during this time but that did not happen in a nutshell, Altidore scored just two goals in his first season with Sunderland, one in the League Cup match against MK Dons, and it took him all the way to the end of the fiscal year in December to score his first ever league goal for Sunderland. So then overall, Josie Altidore stayed for a season and a half, scoring only three goals in total, and overall, just one league goal in 42 games. That's not the kind of Josie we were used to seeing in the Dutch League. I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! How dare you! Learn something from this! Also, after the season, the 2014 World Cup came along, and of course, Josie Altidore was our main starter and striker at that time, but unfortunately, he did suffer a very severe hamstring injury in the first opening match for the USA against Ghana, and that kept him out for the rest of the tournament. In January of 2015, Altidore, clearly frustrated with his time on the bench at Sunderland, really pushed through for a move back to MLS with Toronto FC winning his signature. Now, I wish he was able to look for another team, maybe in Europe or abroad somewhere, because coming back to MLS at just 26 years old, it's being the main striker of you at your national team just seemed um, that like not the best idea, because at this time, MLS was really not as better as it is now. It def MLS is definitely better now, but back then, it was still... A retirement league and you know all that stigma about it. I would have loved to see him go back to an, a second division English team at that time or just to, just to get back into form and gain more confidence and maybe come back somewhere in the Premier League or like a La Liga again. So then now in the MLS, Adelor's career with Toronto was definitely a positive though you know until the end. Uh, overall in 173 games with Toronto, Josie scored 79 goals and provided 26 assists. He helped his team win the 2017 MLS Cup and Supporter Shield, three Canadian championships in 2016, 2017, and 2018, and then became runners-up of the CONCACAF Champions League and the Campeones Cup in 2018. Because of some behind-the-scenes drama, Toronto ultimately bought out Josie's contract with them making him a free agent. And from my knowledge, it's still not entirely known what the hard facts are about the drama between Josie and Toronto's board or whatever the hell it was. And I'm not gonna speculate or you know guess because I don't wanna put things in people's ears or mouth, but there was stuff going on, canceled this contract basically, and that's it. So of course, after his dismissal from Toronto, Josie still stayed in MLS and joined New England Revolution. In those 19 games so far he had with New England Revolution, he has scored only one goal. Because of this, I'm sure, uh, Josie was loaned out recently to Liga MX team Puebla for a six-month loan, where he played six games, scoring two goals, two goals early on, um, and then eventually spent the rest of his time <laughs> that he was loaned out to not in the squad or on the bench. So that's no bueno. Now we come to today's present time, awaiting the new MLS season. 
Eldor is still back in the squad for New England. Bruce Arena says he's part of the team. We'll see what happens with Bruce Arena and Eldor if he wants to play him or not. If he's got confidence in him, you know, Bruce Arena and Eldor go way back, back you know, in USMNT uh, history. So I hope that he can find some form again and find back in the net for his sake. In his career thus far, Josie has scored 158 goals and given 57 assists in the 458 games. Now, for his USMNT career, I think he was pretty much successful, winning a lot of things for USA, being part of a lot of big, important moments for the USA. But ultimately, he is the ninth most, most capped player of all time for the USA and the third highest goal scorer in USMNT history with 42 goals in 157 games. He last appeared for the USMNT back in the Gold Cup Final in 2019. Well, overall, I think Josie's main downfall was his injury list. He's had a lot of bad, severe problems like knee problems, hamstring injuries, ankle injuries. All of this is part of your legs. It, he was a pacey player. He would early in his career play on the wings as a pacey player. Like He was supposed to be the best striker we've ever had. He's got the strength, the speed, he had some pretty good skill, you know, he has good hold up play. He could have played as a second striker. It was it was he was such a good young talent and it's sad to see that he was not able to fulfill those big shoes that we all thought he was going to get, you know? Um, but overall, I was always a fan of Aldor. I was wanted him to do better. I think if he was be able to stay healthy at that time back then, he was still to this day probably be our main starter. He would start the Qatar World Cup for the USA because we still have no good strikers. And that, that's not a, a taboo thing to say, I believe. There's no one striker that you say, yep, he's starting. Josie was that guy. And I was like, yep, Josie's starting. Josie's going to be the striker. That's it. And I wish that he had a healthier career, that he was able to, to fulfill that role for the rest of his career.